How's it going beautiful people of the Instagram? Check this out. This is one of my large acrylics. Ain't it beautiful? It's one of my large acrylic paintings I've been working on. It's hammer time for those of you who are not ready. It's hammer time. Look at this beautiful acrylic painting. This is large too. I think it's about four or five feet. Maybe a little longer, maybe a little larger, I don't know. Look at that. I went Pollock on it. I went a little Pollock. It just feels right, you know, as I'm as I'm dripping the paint, it feels right. It, it just feels like there's a there's actually a guard in there. This is acrylic on canvas. Super awesome. I couldn't be happier with it. I'm gonna make about 20 of these babies. Because I can. <laughs> make about 20 large ones like this all right guys for those of you who are not joining in haven't joined in this is hammer time you see my beautiful face now yeah oh sorry yeah there we go hammer time hammer time those of you who don't know what hammer time is it's when I get to talk about art Look at my beautiful face. Yeah. Hammer time. So guys, this is Jose Trujillo. I am the world's greatest living artist. The art world, the art world chose me. Yeah. I'm in my art studio, working on some, uh, some large canvases and getting some stuff ready. Look at this hair. Muy guapo. Good looking. I'm a good looking bastard. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. All right, guys. So this morning is hammer time. I give you guys a little pep talk every morning, early in the morning. It's a little bit of a little bit of hammer time. That's Amber. Amber called it hammer time. I gotta clean this thing up. All kinds of messes in the studio. So Zara says, why do you prefer to paint dirty? Because I'm a dirty boy, Zara. That's why. I'm a, I'm a dirty, dirty man. <laughs> paint dirty. <laughs> I don't think there's there's clean painting. I think they call that... I think clean painting is... Uh, what is clean painting? Uh, what is clean painting? I don't know what clean painting is. Uh, well, what would it be? Illustration, maybe? I don't know, maybe, maybe. Uh, I don't know if illustration is painting. Uh, no, there is no such thing as clean painting, Zara. I'm sorry. You gotta be dirty. And the dirtier you are, the awesomer you are. <laughs> the awesomer. <laughs> I'm just joking. I paint dirty because I like to. Here's my Starbucks. I'm ready. Mm. Hammer time. So, guys. Those of you who are artists and are doing your thing and are ready to uh, rumble with your artwork, I just wanted to give you guys a little a little tip, okay? Here we are. Understand and recognize your window of opportunity. Don't kid yourself. There are windows. There are windows of opportunity. When I was growing up, uh, I remember my family giving me some, some, uh, what they thought was good advice, but it wasn't, it wasn't that good. <laughs> I remember my older siblings telling me, look, you only, you only get so, a handful of opportunities in your lifetime. I don't think that's true. I think what they were referring to was windows of opportunity, not opportunities in itself. You always have opportunities, but windows to make your moves, Right. They, you have to recognize them. You have to be able to see them. They're, they're always there, but you have to be able to see them. One, this, this comes out of preparation. Preparation. So, uh, let's say that you are rocking and rolling. You're creating your artwork and you're putting it out into the marketplace and whatnot, right? And then someone says, oh my God, right? Your work is awesome. Let's go ahead and put you in this super cool art show, right? Uh, 
And you're going to be seen by, I don't know, half a million people in a weekend or, you know, a couple hundred thousand people in a weekend. That's a window of opportunity, right? You have to be able to recognize them. Those are windows of opportunity. Zara says, what do I do? I'm a super, super awesome artist. Uh, so you have to be able to recognize those windows of opportunity because if you don't, they, it's not that they close. You just, you go to the next phase in your life or the next thing, whatever you're doing. So it's very important to start recognizing those windows of opportunity. Uh, one can be very simple, as simple as being invited to a show or, or why, why was that a window of opportunity? Let me, let me step back. Why was going into an art, art fair show invited, right? Uh, most people would think, no, that's not an opportunity. It is because you have to be able to have work that people believe it's worth marketing and selling or, you know, has a market. So even though it might cost you, I don't know, four, five, six grand, whatever, to, to set up your booth in, a, in a, one of those big art shows, it is a window of opportunity. It's a huge opportunity and you have to be able to recognize it. And even though you may not have that, that disposable income for that, uh, or you may not even have the artwork, tell yourself, I don't, but I'm going to go get it. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to, I'm going to go create the artwork. And it might take you, I don't know, a couple of sleepless nights creating artwork or a couple of weeks or whatever. It might take you going and, and, and borrowing some money from, I mean, it, it will come down to, to, to doing it, right? To getting it. And many of us think that the opportunity is when all the stars are aligned, right? Everything is in your favor. Like you got, you, you have some, some money saved, you have some artwork ready, and they're like, oh, okay, you have a great style, and then you're like, oh, okay. Uh, how much I've been asking, I've been asked some strange questions. Let me see Zara. Zara says, how much do you gain of that in one month? Uh... Plenty. Let's call it plenty. <laughs> I gotta close my. I gotta close one eye. Plenty. Plenty, Zara. I make a. I make a fine living. Ah. <laughs> oh, you're painting too. I see. I see. I see. I see. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It just depends. You know, it depends on what you're doing. It depends on where your market is and and how much you, what your price points are. And I'm gonna be talking about that tomorrow though in Marketing Tuesday. But. Uh, guys start recognizing your windows of opportunity because they are there you just have to recognize them when it's time to jump it's uh you're gonna blame everything around you you're gonna blame you're gonna blame the you might i don't know you may you may have the muscle already but even if you do it's always every time you're stretching right every time you're going into a new window of opportunity you're stretching yourself so you may end up blaming uh, the marketplace, you may end up blaming uh, your spouse. You may say, my spouse doesn't back me up. Or you may end up saying, uh, uh, I don't know, my work is not good enough. You're like, my work is not good enough. You may end up going into that mind, you know, <laughs> mental fucks. <laughs> you may end up going into that. And the reality is that that's not true. It's just that... Uh, when we see windows of opportunity, we we start becoming, uh, we overthink it because because we want everything to align. Many 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 of us we want everything to align. How's it going, uh, Vera Shama? Vera Maha, yeah. Hello. So so if you're an artist. Make sure that you are, whether you're an artist or not, but make sure you start recognizing those windows. A lot of people out there talk about, you only get three opportunities in your life. That's not true. Or I'm too, see, we use all these things. I'm too young. I'm too old. I'm not ready enough. Or or I've already, I, I've heard people say, I've already slashed my, 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 slayed my dragons. And they're in their 50s. And I'm like, oh, what? Did you what 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 you, what you do like career wise right I'm talking about uh, yeah I already slay my dragons I've I've done the art thing I did the art fair shows and this and that I already done it and I'm like dude then go do some more you know like what do you mean you've already done it you it 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 ain't over till it's over you know it ain't over till you're like painting in your bed and you're like. Ugh. 
And that's when that that's when it's over. And and maybe I, I'll come back. You know, maybe the whole reincarnation thing is true. I'll come back. I'll be like, let's do it. I'm ready to paint some more paintings. Uh, but recognize those windows, guys. That they're extremely important because every time that you're marching towards something, you're gonna start popping into those windows. And those little windows of opportunity are the see what they really are like, guys. Let me let me share it with you. They're quantum leaps. Seminal Wood says, I'm in my 70s and I'm still going. Yeah, that's how it is. That's how it is. I love that attitude. I love that power. You got the power. The windows of opportunity are really quantum leaps. But you got to go through the complaining first. Okay? Because there's a lot of complaining. There's a lot of, uh, uh, in the beginning stages especially, there's uh you know, well, I would go work there, but I don't have A, B, and C. Or, or uh, you know, who's going to babysit my kid? I don't know, dude, get a babysitter. You know, care.com, I don't know. Uh, like right now, I'm, I'm looking for someone to drive my, my kid from school, pick him up and drive him, uh, you know, drop off and pick up. Because uh, my studio is about 30 minutes from the school. Right, because I, I wanted to keep him in, in that school, that side of town, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a great school. So, so it's a it's a drive, right? So every time that I that I go there, it's like an hour and plus, right? Because I have to prepare. I, have to, I usually have you know I'm moving around. I'm I have paint, and I have to change my shirt, and and on and on, right? It, because it's, it's it's literally a thirty minute drive just to get there. So, so you have to recognize that, right? Those, those little things, the, the, the money, the money, the money, <laughs> yeah, the money too. The time wasters, they are ultimately they're money wasters too. But the time wasters, those things that suck your time. Because if they're sucking your time, they're sucking your energy, right? They, 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 remember, time is where you, where you deposit energy. Time is the gap where you deposit energy. So you have to start recognizing those little windows because they're quantum leaps. I hope I'm making my, 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 myself clear here. They're little quantum leaps. They're little black holes. Like Albert Einstein used to say, they, they what, what, what did he say, they, they bend? Space time continuum. <laughs> and I think I'm going to, uh, to the DeLorean and, and, uh, and back to the future. But but when 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 you're when you're moving towards something all of a sudden there's a, a little opportunity someone invites you to an art show and then someone else invites you to an art show and then someone else invites you to an art show what do you do oh you start crying you get overwhelmed oh my god if i only had all these uh, uh, can we do it next year that's the first thing that people start saying can we do it can we do it three months from now it's like no dude you got invited right now jump on it go make some artwork don't sleep tonight go get some lattes i don't know Go get someone to babysit your kids. Go get someone to, to, why? Because you have to jump into the opportunity because that's going to, what, what those little opportunities do, they're trampolines. They're like, boing, to the next, you know, like, like Mario Brothers. <laughs> Completely dated myself here. <laughs> they, they, they're little, you know, they're, they, they take you to the next level in a quantum leap. Things that every time you offer an opportunity, it's a quantum leap. Now they're not all like the greatest thing. They're not. They're not gonna change your life. They're not gonna change your career. And all of a sudden, you have to, you know, just relax and and start. I don't know, getting uh, recognition and and money for your artwork. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that when you get one of those little opportunities, it takes you about six months ahead or a year, depending. Right? It takes you like what you're doing with those opportunities that you're crunching time. What it would have taken you five years to get three shows or ten shows or whatever. I don't know, right? Someone offers you three shows in a row. You just crunch time. You essentially went to the future, grabbed time by the hair, and brought them to you. That's really what you did. <laughs> by the hair. <laughs> it sounds so violent. <laughs> I'm thinking about the, the 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 Aztec drawings, those codex drawings that, that they're like grabbing people by the head and they're like by the hair and they're like come here. <laughs> but 
But that's really that's literally what happens when you when you take on opportunities, you're crunching time. When someone says, "Hey, by the way, there is this uh, event here. There is this little opportunity. There is this little thing happening here. And if you don't jump on it and you're stagnate and you're like, well, I don't know because I'm really very busy. In reality, no. There's two things happening in reality. Okay, two. Uno y dos. Two things only. You either have lots of time or you have lots of money. Right? It's it's two things that are happening for most people. I'm a Super Bowl artist. Totally. I love that. <laughs> you either have you either have lots of time or you have lots of income. It's it's really two things with with uh just about anyone, right? It, not every single person. I'm generalizing, of course. There's people that that have both. Uh and there's people that feel like they have none, right? I don't have time or income. And then that's a sadder story. But you either have lots of time or lots of income. So When you have lots of time, what happens is that you need to start finding, generating those opportunities, right? Because opportunities will result in income. And I'm talking to artists, of course, but this fits in any other career. It's not just being an artist. So as you go towards your art career and you're doing your thing and you're, you're creating momentum, you're generating opportunities, you present your artwork here, you present your artwork there, You sell something here, you talk to someone on Facebook, you talk to someone on Instagram, and on and on, and you just create this fire, right? Opportunities will start popping up. Someone's going to say, oh, by the way, how much would you charge for this commission, you know, for this painting? I want you to paint, I don't know, my my son, my daughter, or I have, or I'm a, I love horses. Can you paint this horse for me? You know, I'm all into the Kentucky Derby stuff. Uh, or a puppy, whatever, right? And you're like, oh my God, I'm so busy, you know, because I'm doing this and that. I don't know. Blah, blah. X, wrong, wrong. Take it. Take it. Say, yes, I can. Of course. I was waiting for you. I'm here. Boom. Take that opportunity. As you're going and then someone says, right, you already took that opportunity. Someone says, oh, there is an opening here for an exhibit. Would you like to do it? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I just took on this commission and then I have to create artwork to put on Etsy and eBay. And and now I have an art show. What am I going to do? Oh, my God. Don't cry. Don't panic. Don't uh, go into a corner and rock yourself. Take the opportunity. Take it. Say, my God, opportunity, I was waiting for you. Come here, let me hug you. See what you're doing as you're taking all the opportunities. You Now, you don't know how you're going to handle them. And it's a good thing. It always is a good thing. That's why only very few people actually make it in any industry. And what I mean making it, make some sort of success. Because they go, they generate lots of opportunities, and they don't get overwhelmed. In the beginning, everybody does, because you're learning, right? But... What you're doing is that you're t you're you're crunching all of these opportunities, and then you figure it out how you're going to how you're going to uh, come up, how you're going to show up, right? You first take the opportunity. You don't first figure out how you're going to show up. This is the golden nugget. Golden nugget. You don't first figure out how you're going to show up. That will kill every opportunity before it leaves the tracks. You first grab the opportunity and then you say, hmm, I wonder how I'm going to show up for this. Now, that seems counterintuitive. It seems uh, irresponsible. It seems, uh, I don't know, you're not thinking straight. You're not thinking right. It's, it's, not, it's not the proper way of doing things. You first want to be able to know exactly You know, assess the situation. Know what you're going to need. And on and on. No, you're not sending a rocket to the moon. Okay? No one is sending a rocket to the moon. We're generating opportunities. We don't need we don't need exact math. We don't need to, to land it there. Exactly. So this is what happens a lot with, with, with a lot of artists. You know, we... we I know because it happened to me. I'm not talking from the Tower of Judgment here. It happened to me. It happened to me constantly. And... and And it still happens to me. I still have to like slap myself out of it and be like, dude, get up. You're acting stupid. Uh, you know, because what happens is that we get presented with opportunities and then we try to figure out 
oh my God, I wonder how can I fit that into my schedule? And then I wonder if, who's going to pick up my son from school? Hmm. Or well, Monday, I'm doing this on Monday already. I'm doing, I have something else on Monday or, 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 you know, the dog's outside barking. Or I have something to do on the weekend. You know, I already have my, my schedule is full. I already have a, an art exhibit. You know, on Friday night or Saturday night or whatever. What can I? Oh my God, I can't. I can we leave it for another day? See, this is this is exactly the kind of talk that holds you and binds you and keeps you uh, in a place where you feel uh, uh, not with no power, right? You need to empower yourself, and the way to empower yourself is to latch on and grab every single opportunity. Oh, you want me to go uh, public speak over there? Awesome. I'll do it. I'll do some public speaking there. You know, I'll throw in some business cards and I'll talk about what I do at the end. Because that's what public speaking is, right? You go, you talk, and then you pitch at the end. Everybody knows that. Everybody does that. So that's an opportunity, right? Talking to 20 people, talking to 100 people, you get to talk about what you do. You sell insurance, you get to talk about, about that. You create artwork, you get to talk about that, Right? Oh, can you come and do some demos on paintings? Of course. You go and you do your demo. Even though your time is crunched and you don't know how you're going to show up and you don't know, you, you have no idea. You know, someone is, a, see, this is, this is why this is so important, guys. Because you may think that your time is already, like, you, you're full of, of um, uh, your schedule is full. Think about this for a second. How full is your schedule, really? Just think about it for a second. How full is really your schedule? Remember those no-shows? Remember the no-shows? Remember the lates? The late shows? Remember the people that get there and then they don't want to leave? Uh, or, or, the, or the people that agree to something and last minute say, No, 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 it's not going to work today. Let's push it for tomorrow. Do you recall any of that? Just think about it for a second. Your problem, my problem, everybody's problem is not that your schedule is full. Is that we're counting on very few opportunities. And that is the problem. The real problem is that we're counting on very few opportunities. So if I say, yes, Linda, let's, let's uh, talk about your commission Monday at 5 p.m. And then, I don't know, Roger says... Oh, I have an art exhibit for you, dude. Can we meet at 5 p.m., right? I'll say, uh, or 5.30 or whatever, right? I'll, I'll, I'll book him at 5 p.m. too. I'll be like, wait there, I'm talking to Linda. <laughs> Drink some coffee. I got some coffee for you. Uh, because I know 9 out of 10, it's, it's, see, you want to remain nimble. Because 9 out of 10, things don't work by the book. They almost never work by the book. That's why I say no one's building pianos, guys, and no one's sending rockets to the moon here. All right? I'm not Elon Musk. I'm not sending rockets to Mars right now. What I'm doing is trying to generate opportunity. And as you generate opportunity, then you figure out how to show up. Right? Someone says, I'll meet you at 5. Someone else says, I'll meet you at 5.30. And, and then I'll be like, oh, my God, I can't. And, and those both, both people, right, uh, that's like the time where they can meet you. And, and you, you're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. The only reason you may feel overwhelmed is because you're only meeting two people that day. You're only having two opportunities. You're only calling two people. You're only meeting two people. You're only meeting two opportunities. That is the problem. That is the, that is the, that is the actual problem that holds us back as artists. What you want to do is you want to have something happening at 9 10, 11, you know, on and on and on, something every hour, something, the ultimate thing would be to have something every five minutes, right? And then have, and then so many opportunities, so much income comes in, and then you're like, dude, I need some personal assistant. That's what I'm after right now. I need a personal assistant to filter my opportunities, right? I want you to put my higher opportunities, higher opportunities meaning the ones that are advancing, right? Yes, I said it. Some people don't like to talk about this, but I do. The ones that are advancing my career, right? I want my higher opportunities here, the ones that are going to help me faster in my, in my career, I want them up here.
I want, I want to, I want to eat that monster first. And then give me the other ones. The other ones where, you know, I don't know, I have a little show at the cafe here. I have a little thing here. I have a, you know, but I want my, my income and, and, uh, and exposure, big exposure and income, right? I want those first. I want them. Bring them to me. So as you create opportunities, then everything else. See, you have to be you have to be able to recognize them. And the way to recognize them, I know I'm I'm being redundant here, but but some people are coming in late. So I have to, you know, say it again. The way that you that you recognize opportunities is that you don't. <laughs> you don't, you just grab it. It looks like an opportunity. Is this really? Some people tell me, is it worth it to put stuff on Etsy? I'm like, uh, I don't know. Is it? Is it worth it to keep it, to keep the artwork at home? Like what? Which one is it? Right? Is it worth it to go talk to 20 people about my art? I don't know. Is it worth it to talk to nobody? Like, you know, like which one is it? What game are we playing here? Of course it's worth it. Now, the question that you're really trying to ask is a sophisticated one, but you're not in a position to ask a sophisticated question. The sophisticated question is, I have, I'm going to go talk to a thousand people here and 20 people over here. Which one should I choose first? Now that's what, what you're trying to ask, but you're asking it prematurely. You're asking yourself, is it worth it to go and knock on the door of a gallery? Uh, you know, is it worth it? I don't know. How many exhibits do you got? Do you have an exhibit every week? No, then it's worth it. It's really, it's very much worth it. Go do it. Uh, is it worth it to sell artwork at, you know, I don't know, at a hundred bucks? I don't know. Is it worth it? Are you selling a hundred dollar pieces every five minutes? Uh, no, then I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's worth it. You know, I'm sure it's worth it. It's also worth it to sell artwork for, you know, a thousand, two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, thirty K, a hundred K. It's all worth it. Why? Because it ain't happening consistently. Only as it starts to happen consistent. Man, I'm dropping so much gold here. Only as it's happening consistently, it's when you get to ask more sophisticated questions. The problem is that many artists, we ask sophisticated questions, intelligent questions, right? I'm trying to be intelligent. <laughs> That's what we tell ourselves. I'm trying to be intelligent. We ask sophisticated questions prematurely. We're like, uh... I don't know. Is it worth it to lift those weights? Right? Uh, well, are you already, are you strong already? No, then I, I, I think it's worth it. You know, if, if you're into bodybuilding and you haven't developed the muscle, you see what I'm going? I know it sounds so obvious, but that's really what we're doing as artists. We're like, is it worth it to show the work? Uh, three people call me, you know, for different opportunities. One wants a commission. Another one wants a, uh, a photo shoot, I don't know, with my artwork. And another person, because because it's all exposure, right? And another one wants, uh, I don't know, an art fair show, right? Art fair show, photo shoot, and a little commission. And then there you are going, I wonder which one is the one I should do. Oh my God, do, do all of them. Do all of them and then go get yourself another 20 of those, of each, right? And then And then figure out how to show up later. Like, go get them and then figure out how to show up. Because what happens is uh, we have a saying in, in, in Spanish, uh, specifically, I'm, I'm Mexican. I was born in Mexico, living in the U.S. Bam. Uh, we have a saying called, it goes like this. Uh, I'm going to say it in Spanish for those of you who speak Spanish. La carga hace el burro. The donkey is not the donkey because, you know, because donkeys are strong or mules, right? It's the weight that makes it strong. The weight, the weight that they put on, on, on the animal's back is what makes it strong. It's not because the, the, the animal is strong. Therefore, we're like, oh, let's put some weight on the back. No, they start putting weight. And then the, 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 the donkey becomes, it, it, it can take it. It becomes stronger. You know, you first put some weight and then you put more weight. And that's how people carry, used to carry, you know, the mules and the donkeys. They used to carry stuff around because they knew that they had this, this, this animal has this very special strength that the more you pile, the stronger it gets. And 
and I'm sure it's not just that animal, but but that's a saying, right? The the the, the weight is what makes it the donkey. And as human beings, we are afraid of weight. We're afraid of well, I'm not so afraid of weight. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I need to take some weight off. But you know what I'm talking about. We're afraid of weight. We're afraid of putting on uh, challenges because because opportunities never look uh, comfortable. Opportunity, that's how you recognize one, right? You don't. That's why I say you don't because opportunities look like a problem. They always look like problems. They look like challenges. They look like shit, really. The, 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 the reality is that opportunities look like shit first. When you see an opportunity, you're like, oh my God, that looks like a bad problem. That's what you're thinking. What I'm training myself to think is, oh my God, that's a juicy opportunity. That's that's a great opportunity right there. I see. No one is, no one wants to solve that problem. Leave it to me. I'll go take care of it. Right? Uh, in artwork, when a museum called me not long ago and they said, we are looking for an artist, but no one has 60 pieces. It was 60 pieces, I think. Yeah. Somewhere around 60 pieces. And we need about, you know, this much pay, space. But no one has it. You know, no one, no, no, none of the artists that we've talked about. We've talked to, uh, to a lot of artists, but they don't have that much inventory. And guess what I did? Guess what I did? Just guess. Just guess. <laughs> Just guess. <laughs> Take a wild guess. I said, oh my God, you were looking for me. I'm so glad you found me. I got it. I didn't have it. I said I had it. I didn't have it. Now, is that deceiving? Is that lying? Sure, whatever. Call it whatever you want. I call it opportunity. I said, oh, don't worry about it. I got it right here. Guess what I did? I was like, I called a friend. I was like, I need some help in the studio. You will now help me stretch canvases for the rest of the week. You will not sleep. You will not eat. I'm just joking. But I needed some help. So I was like, dude, you got to stretch some canvases. And then I made it happen, right? I was already busy, but I knew that, see, the busier you are, the faster you get. And the faster you get, you start hitting on certain walls, right? Because they become challenges. Now, that's where you bring people in and you bring help. And you're like, dude, I need help. By the way, I need some help right now. I need a couple of people in my studio. Pronto! So... So you, you, that's how you generate it, guys. You say yes first. So many of us say no first. We're like, oh my God, yeah, that looks like, oh man, yeah. You know what? I could have said, you know what? Give me, give me six months. Give me six months and I'll go and, and you know, I'll, I'm going to create a collection of work. Give me six months. No, I said, dude, I have it already. How many do you need, brother? Come on, tell me. Shoot, how many? Oh, well, like, we need about 60 here, blah, blah, blah. What if I take some large pieces? Well, if you take some large pieces, we're going to need about, you know, maybe about... You know, 25 to 30 of them at most. I'm like, dude, I got it. Don't worry. What do I have to do? All I have to do, yes, out of pocket, I have to spend the, 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 the paint. I have to pay the help. Yes, those are problems. That's why people don't do it because they are problems. They are. They're challenges, right? I need to get a handyman to help me stretch the canvases and do all of this. I needed to and, and prime the paintings. I needed some studio help, right? Someone who actually knows some of this stuff and I don't have to slow down and teach them. Uh, just direct them, right? Someone needed to prime my, my canvases. Somebody needed to help me uh, color mixing and, and, you know, and set up and blah, blah, blah. Yes, of course, that is a challenge. And that person doesn't, is not going to do it for free. That person needs to get paid, right? So those are challenges. But at the end of the day, how much more am I getting out of that opportunity, right? How much more am I getting? Out of that opportunity. That's really what I'm thinking. Like, oh, okay, well, there's this opportunity. I need to exhibit this many paintings. What's the exposure like? How many people are in there? You know, because what if what if there's no one in there, right? And and see, but that's a more sophisticated question because now I got things happening. If I had nothing happening, I would go do it regardless. But but since I have things happening, multiple things happening, I ask the question, the more sophisticated question, which is, well, how many people are you expecting in the show? And then people tell me, you know, well, we're expecting this many people and then we're expecting catering and then we're expecting this and we're having all this and we're having a band and it's all going to be surrounded uh, or it's going to be around your show. That's when I go, oh, OK. Yeah, that sounds like a great opportunity. Let's do it. Right. But it's a more sophisticated question. Now, the problem is that 
you may not have something happening in the background and you're asking sophisticated questions. They're not sophisticated. I just like to call them that because they sound cool. You're asking questions like, well, you know, how many, what's the traffic like? Dude, who cares? You got nothing on the background, right? Your, your, your schedule's not full. If, if two people showed up or one person shows up to the show, it's one person, right? It's one person more than what you had before. So it's a good opportunity. I know it's, I know it's counterintuitive. I know most people are like, dude, this guy's crazy. I may be crazy, but I know what I'm talking about. I've done this. This is not my first rodeo, guys. And I'm sharing this with you. For those of you who are ready for the next, for your quantum leap, take on all those opportunities. Don't worry how you're going to show up. Figure it out later. Figure it out. You know, just don't, don't, don't prepare. Don't point and shoot. Shoot first. And then figure it out. See what happens. Okay? Uh, figuratively talking, please. <sighs> Uh, so, so that's what you got to do, guys. Just show up, show up. Where find the opportunity? Where's the opportunity? Whatever looks like a problem, right? Something looks like a problem. It's more than likely an opportunity. Uh, we have too much space, and no artist has inventory. Oh, it's me. You were looking for me. I'm right here. Uh, I love your paintings, but they're too large. And then artists go, oh yeah. You can't really ship this painting, this large painting. Oh yeah, well I paint large. Dude, there's the opportunity. Paint smaller for that person or for that group of people. That is the opportunity right there. Or you paint very small and some people say, yeah, you're a plain art painter, right? You do little paintings like this. You do, you, you, you do tiny little stuff like this, right? And then you're like, and you're like, yeah, this is what I do, blah, blah. And someone's like, yeah, I wish I, you know, something like that, but this size. And then you go, oh yeah, I don't, I don't really paint large, you know? Because last time I tried painting large, they didn't really want to pay for that. So I don't, no, you're, you're looking at it all wrong. You're, 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 you, your perception is off. It's very off. You're looking at it wrong. You got to see the opportunity and say, oh, you want something large? Absolutely. These are the prices. How large do you want it? This, 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 these are, these are the price points. Right? Because, see, there's another little golden nugget. Boom, golden nugget. Many artists, what they do is that when they're going to share their work and they're going to sell it or, or, you know, how's it going, Linda? When they're going to sell their work, the very first thing that they do, huge problem, huge problem, is that they have A or B. Which one would you like? Uh, I don't know. I was thinking about D or C. That's what the customer says, right? The collector, the art collector. And and you go, oh, too bad. I only got A and B, right? Because I'm an A and B artist. It's like, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, have, have A, B, C, D, E, F. What do you want? What letter do you want? I got it for you. Why? Because I ain't got nothing happening back here, right? My schedule's not full enough. So if you want Z, I'll give you Z. If you want H, I'll give you H. I'm talking about different price points, right? What do you want? What are you What are you looking for? Well, I want a painting like this. I want a big painting. Oh, okay, cool. How big do you want it? Well, I'm looking for this. Okay, well, let me give you some sizes, options, and then some price points for each option. And people go, oh, well, no, I'm I, I'm not I'm not Walmart. You're not Walmart. What you're doing is that you're filling up your pipeline because you ain't got nothing happening back here. This looks like a magic wand. I'm gonna start using this. You got nothing back here. Or you may have something, but it's not full enough, right? If, if Susie's back here, right, and your schedule, Susie's back here, and Susie is, gets cold feet and doesn't want to do the commission, right? And then you're questioning whether you do the commission for, I don't know, Angie or George or whoever, right? And you're like, I don't know, well, because they, 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 the price point, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. You're doing it all wrong, you know, because Susie back here might get cold feet. And she might say, no, I'm pulling off. I, I'm not going to do it. I'm, and it's not because they want to go to another artist. That's the problem most artists think. It's because Susie rather spend the money uh, in, in, I don't know, in Cancun. Or, or she wants to go to Disneyland and take her grandchildren. That's, she's not thinking about, oh, I'd rather do it with this other artist. No, they already contacted you. They like what you do. They're not, they're not going to your competition. Your competition is not even who you think it is. Your competition is 
is uh, upgrading the new uh, SUV to a new SUV. Your competition is, I got to paint my house. Uh, your competition is, I need new living room, a new living room set, right? Because if your painting costs four or five K, they're probably thinking about, well, I could do that, but I could also do the living room set. And if you're wishy-washy and you're around the bush and you're not straight with them and you don't give them options and you don't cater to them, remember you're in, you're in service and you don't service them, they're going to say, you know, fuck it. I'll go for the living room set. And that's what they're thinking, really. That's really what they're thinking. It's just that many of us don't know that. Many of us think, oh my God, she's going to leave me to go to the other artist who's my competition. That's what's going to happen. No, it's, that's not what's going to happen. That's not what's... That's not, <laughs> People that want something special for their home, they're not buying on price. It's not a necessity. It's, it's an emotional necessity, but it's not a physical necessity. It's not, I, oh my God, I, I need it. No, people will, will first spend on a huge TV over your artwork if it comes to necessity. They are not spending it because of the necessity. They're spending it because they want something good in their life. Who the hell wants a Rolex? I don't have a Rolex, but who the hell wants a Rolly, right? A 10K Rolly to tell the time. No one in their right mind wants a 10K Rolly to tell the time. It's a special milestone for someone. They work their asses off and they want something to remind them that they, that they deserve good things in life. That's all. No one, no one needs a rolly to tell life. You got a cell phone to tell, to tell time, right? No one even needs a, 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 a watch anymore, right? But we do things, they're milestones, they're touchstones. They're like, oh man, you know, the guy is looking at the rolly and, and he's, he goes... Yeah, dude, I deserve it. And it makes it feel good about himself, herself, right? It's like, yeah, I've worked hard. I, 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 you know, you don't need a six pack. You don't need like to be super, you know, buff, right? Like you may need to be healthy. I need to be healthy. I need to be fit. I know, but I don't need a six. But the six pack, the muscles, it's, it's, they're milestones, right? They're milestones. I'm going after them though. They're milestones. They're like, dude, you, you, all of a sudden you touch your six pack, you touch your, oh, hell yeah. You take off your shirt and you look, and you're like, hell yeah. You know, I remember waking up at five in the morning, going to the gym, hitting it hard, right? They're milestones. It's the same thing. They're emotional milestones. They're not necessarily physical. Even though they, they feel, they look tangible, they're not really tangible. Mild, they're, they're, not, they're not tangible necessities. They're, physic, they're psychological, psychological necessities. We all need them. We all have different things. Right? The person with a new car, they're not, they, you don't need a $100,000 car or Tesla's. You don't need that car to, to move from point A to point B. Of course not, right? It's a personal thing. It's a personal milestone. Person worked their ass off or whatever, right? They feel they deserve it. I don't know. I have no reason exactly why. Everybody has different reasons and they're all good for that person. They're all true. So, so when you are selling your artwork out there and you are afraid of uh, the challenge, you're thinking about it wrong. No one out there is thinking, uh, oh my God, this painting right here is $10,000 and this one's $1,000 and they're just about the same. They're not thinking like that. They're not thinking, if, if that was true, no artist with a career could have a career. <laughs> that sounded stupid, but true. Many things that sound true sound stupid too. That are true sound stupid. But you know, no one would have that. No one would have a career if 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 people bought on necessity only. Of course not. You know, no no one's trying to see no one's trying to see uh, a painting over their couch and thinking, oh my god, you know, this is all I need. If, if they're doing it for that reason, it's because it's because they're out of place in their life, right? They're out of place in their life where or, or a moment in their life, not necessarily a place, but a moment in their life where where they where they feel like, dude, I don't care about art. I just need the red to match with the sofa and on and on. And that's why a lot of artists get upset. But that is the reality of that person. That is the reality of what they want. Right. But then they'll go and spend the 10K, the 10K on a rollie. Or they will go in and, and 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 later on buy a small painting that is like you know I don't know twenty k or whatever I 
I, I meet, I've met a couple of people like that. <laughs> they have a huge painting that was like, I don't know, like $300. And then they have a little painting, right? That's like, oh my God, this is a, you know, on and on and on by this awesome artist. And it was like 20K. And because I'll spend on that, right? Because it's emotional. It's emotional. It's for different reasons. So that's why you shouldn't think like that. You shouldn't think, oh, my artwork, they're not going to appreciate it. That's not true. It's not true. You just got to you just gotta know who you're talking to. What do they want it for? They, they, many people that are buying artwork, especially uh, as they get older, they're buying it for uh, emotional purposes. They're milestones in their life. They, they, they've been a doctor for a long time. Or, or they, they don't have to have necessarily the, the, the disposable income. They might save for it. They might uh, save. Not that they have it there ready to like burn it. Light it up. Let's burn this, you know, 10K, 20K on this painting. No, they, they, some people are like, dude, this, this is really important to me. You know, the artwork is... I've met collectors who've sold their jewelry to go and buy my artwork. I've met them. I've met them. I personally met them. And it is mind-blowing to me. It's, it's, it's like, what an honor. You know, what an honor that they believe that. That they, that they trust in my work so much. That they'll get rid of some of their belongings to go get some of my work. And so to take a couple of steps back, always look for the opportunity, guys. Always look for the opportunity and, and, and understand that the opportunity almost always, almost always looks like a challenge first. You have to dig in there and, 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 and get the fruit out. And anything, right? If you want the fruit, if you want the juice... Anything you have to dig, dig, you have to dig deep. You have to climb high to get it, right? You want coconuts? Climb, right? You anything, anything. You have to, you have to work to get it because it looks like a problem first. It first looks like a challenge, but that's that's what opportunities look like. You know why? Because they are intended. They are created. This is what I believe, anyways, to mislead. Those who really don't want it. To brush off the majority of the people who don't want it. Right? They are they're 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 created that way because only very few people are actually gonna go and climb that tree. And if you're that type of person that's gonna go climb that tree, uh now you know. Most opportunities, I think all opportunities, they the the the, the sky doesn't part open and, 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 and everything aligns and says, here's the opportunity. It, it's Almost never that way. It almost always looks like a nightmare first. Opportunities almost always look like a nightmare first. Like, oh man, this this looks like a logistics problem. This looks like a nightmare. And then someone else with more enthusiasm, with more experience, is like, no, dude, you're looking at it wrong. That that's an opportunity. That's actually what's going to propel your career. You're not. You're just not. You don't have the goggles, the right goggles, to look at it correctly. So I'll leave you guys with that. My name is Jose Trujillo, your world's greatest living artist. Bam! Take care. Oh, let me show you guys one of my awesome paintings. Look at that. It's one of my large paintings. I told you guys I went Pollock on it. Look, Jackson Pollock. Ah, it's flowers. But so I base it out of some studies that I have right here. These are my smaller studies. And by the way, I sell this on eBay for those of you who are like, dude, I want to get some. All you have to do is like click on the link on my profile. So this is the little one, and then there's the daddy or mommy. It's bigger ones. So first I do the studies, and I sell the studies because some people are like, dude, I want those, right? Because I can't afford that. You know you can, you just don't want to yet. You're not, you're not, you're not out for the for the big piece yet. It's cool. I'm gonna wait for you though. Because I know eventually you're going to be like, dude, I should have bought Jose Trujillo before he was world famous. Because right now I'm the world's greatest living artist. But soon I'll be the world's famous also. Yeah. Check it out. And it's acrylic. So it's like super juicy. Look at that. Paint drips and whatnot. That's what makes it fun, though, here in the studio. And I got a couple more. I just bought some, some, uh, I bought like five rolls of canvas. And I think it'll give me enough, enough fire to make maybe 10 canvases, 10 large ones. 
So there it is, guys. I'm gonna be posting this one also on eBay. I think I'm gonna post it on Sachi because because Sachi's. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm I'm gonna start posting some large pieces in Sachi and Amazon handmade. Uh, Amazon handmade is a platform I'm gonna start using. I I signed up to it like months ago, and I signed up to a lot of stuff. I just haven't used it. But uh, I'm looking for some help right now in the studio, and I need some people to start uh, uploading works, moving them from my eBay shop. Uh, not just not just keeping them on eBay, but but moving some of the buy it uh, buy it now, so the set prices, and and moving them onto the different platforms because we're ready. We're ready to roll. Because I want a rolly. I too want a rolly. Because right now I just have this. <laughs> Come on. Everybody deserves a rolly. I don't want it to tell time. I want it to remind me of like the headaches I've gotten in my art studio here. Smelling all the, the clear coats and the turpentines. I, I, I don't use that, by the way, anymore. I got tired of that smell. I use walnut oil now. I got super hippie. I'm like, dude, I'm going to use something else because I need to help myself and Mother Earth. So yeah, I turned super hippie and I'm using walnut oil now. But yeah, I guess the roll is not going to make me look hippie. But whatever. Check it out. Bam! The heel. Guys, remember this signature because you're going to start seeing it more and more. I'm going to turn into a ninja. I'm going to start throwing my signature everywhere. All right, guys. I hope you guys had a great, great morning with me. And you guys continue to rock your day and kick some ass. Go for it. I know you can because it's, it's available to all of us. We can all do it. It's just we got to do it. Take care, guys. Adios.